Good morning. It's Tuesday, January 19th. Welcome back. Uh, Happy New Year, even though it's slightly delayed. We are kind of decreasing the frequency of our videos right now because there's not a lot of new stuff to tell you. And I'm not getting that many questions right now. If new things happen that I think you need to be aware of or you have lots of questions for me, then again, we'll bump up the frequency of our videos. So as of this morning, there are five active cases of COVID-19 disease in special areas number two and surrounding uh, Hannah. All of these people are managing at home on their own. There's none of those residents that are in hospital right now. As you know, we do not keep COVID positive patients in the Hannah Health Center. Anybody in our area who becomes uh, critically unwell that needs to be sent to a, a inpatient unit will be sent to either Drumhill or Three Hills or Red Deer. I received three questions for today. So I was expecting these ones. The first one, can you explain B117 and what's the difference of the variants in B117 and the one in South Africa? So a lot of the news right now has been filled with the idea that the coronavirus that we experienced that began about a year ago now has started to mutate and we've had multiple variants as they are called. They tend to be named after the areas where they're either first identified or most prominent. So right now, while there are a few different variants out there, the ones you're going to hear about in the news are going to be the UK variant and the South African variant. So what we've discovered is that when you look at the genetics or the recipe to make these individual coronaviruses, there have been slight changes or mutations as we call them. What these are primarily affecting are parts of the spike proteins. The spike proteins are what allow the COVID virus to enter into our system and cause symptoms. What we're finding with these new variants is that sometimes they make it easier to get sick or they create slightly different symptoms. So we're concerned you see that they might be called more transmissible or more virulent. We don't really know right now whether that means we're gonna have more serious cases. We know that in some ones, particularly in the UK variant, it is easier for that virus to spread from person to person. Now, of course, these viruses that are variants presented after the current vaccinations were created. So all we have are studies to indicate or give us some idea about whether or not they might be efficacious. And what we're finding is that initial studies show that yes, the current vaccines that we are using, the mRNA vaccines, both from Pfizer and from Moderna, have some efficacy, if not total efficacy, against those new variants, as well as the ones that we're used to. Of course, only time will tell. We're gonna have to watch and wait and see what happens. So not a lot of extra information right now, but more will be coming all the time. The next question asked me about outbreaks. There is an outbreak listed at the Hannah Health Center. Is this the nursing home? Are staff shared between the nursing home and other facilities such as the Acadia Lodge? How long between outbreaks being identified and being listed on the provincial website? So whether some place is identified as being on outbreak depends on the type of facility it is. There are different rules for the official naming of outbreaks, whether it's a school or if it is a nursing home, a hospital, or say a meatpacking plant. Right now, the Hannah Health Center, which can be used as the name for both our acute care hospital as well as our nursing home, is not under outbreak. We do not have any active cases in our nursing home or in our acute care or in our staff members of either of those facilities. We did have an outbreak in our Hannah nursing home, also called the Hannah long-term care facility that was declared over on Christmas Eve. Those types of outbreaks are declared over four weeks after the last case is identified. So that's a long time, but that's for the precaution to make sure that any re added restrictions that are needed to protect the other residents of those facilities are maintained for long enough. So none of those facilities are under outbreak right now. If there are multiple people with symptoms, but no one that has been declared as COVID positive, we're in a little bit of a gray zone. So yes, there are staff members shared between the nursing home and the lodges and manors, but right now none of these facilities have been declared under official outbreak. If that happens, you'll see it up on the website likely within a few days after the outbreak has been declared. I find that the Alberta Health Services website and searchable information is updated a little bit faster than the Government of Alberta one. So if you really want to look for current outbreak data, I would simply put into your search engine 
COVID Outbreaks Alberta Health, and you'll be able to get some very current information as well as some details about the facilities that are currently on outbreak. If you go to the Alberta government website, it might be more delayed, but right now there is no outbreaks declared, so don't stress. Uh, the last question. As the vaccine requires two doses, I have read that some provinces are setting half of their vaccines aside for the second dose, while other provinces are using all of their vaccines and counting on getting more in time for the second shot. What is Alberta doing? So from the time I received this question until now, things actually changed a little bit. So right now, Alberta is not necessarily saving that second dose from the very beginning. They're relying on continued shipments from the vaccine producers. They have, however, lately developed a bit of a shortage. So they have said that they have enough vaccine to guarantee that people can receive their second dose if they've already had their first dose, but they have put off or delayed some of the first doses, particularly for healthcare workers. All of the nursing home residents, as far as I'm aware, in the province of Alberta that wanted vaccine have received that vaccine. And they have, according to manufacturers, between three weeks and six weeks in order to receive that second dose. We don't have studies showing whether or not giving a second dose beyond six weeks is going to be as effective as giving it between three weeks and six weeks. So that's the current expectation that you get your first shot and then between three and six weeks later you receive your second shot. There is a significant amount of immunity that can come from that first vaccine. So we know that up to 10 days or so after you've had your first shot, it can be 90% effective at preventing serious symptomatic infection in you. Now the range depends on the study that you're going for, so it's not great. We really want the maximum protection for people, so we want that second vaccine where you're going to get upwards of 95% effectiveness seven days after your second dose. I'm happy that right now I haven't heard of any concerns about people getting that second dose, but there is a little bit of a delay now, particularly with the Pfizer vaccine, in being able to supply first doses for people. I don't think I can tell you much more than that right now. I'm excited that vaccines are here. I've had my first shot. I'm waiting for my second one. Very minor reactions. Um, the data that I'm hearing out of the United States is again that people are getting a you know, one to two days at most of some pain in their arm, sometimes a low grade fever. The reaction after the second shot anecdotally seems to be worse than after the first shot. But remember that when you get that pain, you get that swelling under the arm or that fever, that's a sign that your body's doing what we want it to do. It's creating those antibodies. And that is the goal of that vaccination. So just plan on maybe not being at work after you end up getting a second shot. That was my plan. I'm booked off the day after just to make sure that I have time to recover. That's all for now. Please continue to send me your questions and uh, I'll see you soon.